Kaya Heritage Project. So this is a project that's very much focused on a particular place. And that place are the communities of Kaira um, and Ely uh, in the southwestern suburbs of Cardiff, Wales' uh, capital city. Uh, the Kaira itself is, a, is, a, is an acronym. It stands for the Kaira and Ely Rediscovering Heritage Project. Um, but it's also a play on words. It's, of course, the, um, the prefix of Kaira. And Kaira in, in Welsh means fort. It's, and uh, you'll come to realise why Kaira is called Kaira. Um, in a moment. The project itself is, is, is more, well, it, it's not really a community archaeology project. Um, it's not simply um, involving archaeology. It's, it's much more multidisciplinary. Yes, archaeology plays a part in a very engaging part for local audiences, but actually it brings to the table a whole range of other disciplines like history, but also the sciences, and particularly art. Um, art, expression of heritage through art, is a major part um, of this project and of engaging uh, particularly local people um, in this project. Started uh, back in 2011, so it's been going a long time now, seven or so years, uh, and it didn't, you know, we, we tend to keep going um, uh, into the future, and we'll say a little bit more about that at the end. And it's really a collaboration between a multitude of different organisations and different individuals. So yes, us as the university, but also local community development organisations, local schools, residents, the council, and other major heritage organisations um, in Wales. People like the Royal Commission, the National Museum, those kinds of uh, organizations all coming to the table adding something to this project all bringing their expertise uh, and creating something that's greater uh, than the sum of its parts um, to put the communities that we're working in in a, in a bit of context Cairo and Ely despite being um, in the most affluent city um, in, in Wales you know, Wales' capital um, um, city are two of the most socially and economically challenged um, wards in all of Wales. Here are some of the, um, the lowlights, I suppose. Very high um, unemployment, you know, you compare that to the Cardiff average. Uh, very high percentage of the population receiving uh, some kind of benefit. And to go along with those and perhaps feeding off each other is very poor educational um, attainment, large numbers of 16-year-olds um, leaving without any, uh, any GCSEs at all, and very, very few um, people going on um, to study at university or any form of, of higher education. And that's certainly something that really drew our attention and, and uh, you know, it was something that we wanted to kind of see if we could help to be part of rectifying. Despite that, despite those challenges, the, the community does have significant, uh, significant strengths as well. In particular, a very strong sense of local identity and community. There are lots and lots of community groups, lots of groups um, within these um, areas doing things um, already, doing things together um, already. And also, despite being kind of traditionally economically asset poor, this area has an incredible strength in terms of its heritage. It's incredibly heritage rich, but it's a heritage for which nothing really has ever been uh, researched, identified, um, been looked at, been used, um, been explored in any, in any way um, to help these, the, these communities um, face up, face some of those um, challenges. We think about some of these uh, heritage assets. We have things like medieval churches, uh, industrial heritage, an old paper mill, um, which was once the, the biggest newsprint producer uh, in all of Europe. And it's, it's the reason these communities exist, the reason these houses uh, are there, are because of this kind of industrial heritage. But it also has uh, older, older sites as well, a Roman villa um, contained within this big open area just here, Trelai Park, 
um, excavated by Wheeler um, in the 1920s, but now just uh, an area of long grass in the park, nothing there to, to tell anyone there's a Roman villa, except if you look at an OS map. Um, the Trello Park itself has an interesting uh, later history. It was the, the area of, uh, it was used as the Cardiff race course. This is where the Welsh Grand National used to be run. Thousands of people used to come down here. Uh, it's also an airfield at one point. Uh, the first ground to wear um, radio transmission was made um, from this airfield. Um, so hugely significant, potentially even internationally significant um, heritage assets. And the jewel in the crown, perhaps, is this site on the southern side, around which much of our work has been focused, although not strict, you know, we haven't just focused on this site, but a lot of the work has been focused on this site. And this is Kyra um, Hill Fort. You can see it's surrounded um, by uh, the, uh, the housing estates um, of Kyra and Ely. You can see the hill fort um, here in this image in the top right, very distinctive triangular shaped hill houses to the north and south, and then framed on its eastern side by uh, the, the, this road that's kind of sides through the promontory of which it um, perches on the end of. A lot, as I said, a lot of our work is focused on the exploration of this, of, of this site. There is significant kind of research potential for Hillfort, and you know, partly the, the project was derived from that potential research um, which could be uh, which could which could be explored through this site. Very few hill forts in uh, in South Wales or Southeast Wales uh, have been explored at any particular scale. Cairo is one of the most elaborate, most uh, one of the largest, one of the most complex hill forts in the region. Uh, and so, you know, there was lots of potential here to actually say something really significant um, about the Iron Age um, in Southeast uh, in, in in Southeast Wales. And there's also a really interesting kind of contradiction here as well that we've, we've, we've kind of played upon. And that is that the, the, the existence of this large complex hill fort suggests that in the past, in prehistory, this was an area of a powerful community, a community that made decisions about what went on in areas um, that surrounded it and effectively the area of modern Cardiff. Today, those communities are marginalised. They're marginalised in terms of economic and political power. And all the major decisions that are taken in this part of the world now take place down at the Senev um, in Cardiff Bay. And these communities feel very voiceless um, within that. I'll hand over to Dave at this point. Right, thank you. Thank you for brutally outing me as a historian, Oli. Um, uh, yeah, I've got a weird job title. It's uh, Lecturer in Early Medieval History, comma, Community and Engagement. Um, and that's how I got involved in the project, working with Oli back in 2011. Um, and really the project came about from us kind of going out and meeting with a, a group of people who have since been involved uh, all the way through uh, at a local school near to the bottom of the hill fort. Um, and uh, that involved meeting with especially uh, a group of people from a community development organisation called ACE, who I will tell you a bit more about in a minute, but that stands for Action in Cairo and Ely. Uh, also the local farmer, um, local school teachers and, and some local residents as well. And the, the underpinning objectives, the underpinning, if you like, almost kind of theory or mission of the project has always been um, uh, was, was really drawn out of that meeting in that, 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 that kind of two hour slot that we had. And, and really these are the underpinning objectives and they have underpinned everything that we've done since uh, in, in, in terms of the funding that we've got and to some extent the, the path that the project has taken. And those were, as Ollie said, to, to foster a positive sense of place, to really kind of change and disrupt that narrative, that negative narrative about the area through this amazing rich heritage, but also through the amazing talent, the amazing untapped potential of these communities, which we've seen, I think, in some of the other papers as well, to create new life opportunities. We, we think educational opportunities very much about, you know, widening participation, short university, but that takes first steps. That takes a building of confidence. Some people uh, sometimes haven't even been leaving the house for a while. So, New life opportunities can mean something quite small sometimes. It can be being part of something bigger. It could be new friendships and social networks that then lead 
on to other exciting things. It could be meeting, uh, you know, your hero. We have a community member who met Carenza, who was a hero. Uh, and, and so uh, that kind of thing. Promoting skills as well, obviously. So skills development, we've heard a lot about that, I think, in other papers. And there are so many skills that can come from this kind of working. As Ollie said, we're an interdisciplinary project. So we do have history, we have art, we have social sciences. Um, but, you know, through archaeology, I think particularly, um, there's such a range and, and plethora of skills. And to challenge those negative views of the area, which actually was revived, reside very much within the community of Cardiff. So, uh, if you like, the, the stigmas really are, are quite localised. And then, obviously, to, to break down barriers to education and improve interest in archaeology. And those things, if you like, have underpinned the project, and they aren't to do with research. So, research doesn't drive the project, if you like. It's the processes of research through which we, we do these things. Um, and we've already talked about the instrumentalisation of archaeology, but maybe we haven't got time to do that now. Just to say a little bit about how this kind of works. So um, we have this very close relationship with ACE, Action Cairo Ely, a community development organisation uh, uh, based locally in, in Ely and Cairo that works for the social health and wellbeing of those communities. Formerly ran the Communities First programme, which is a Welsh government programme to address issues and indices of deprivation. Um, ACE is very much a, uh, founded in those communities. There are a thousand members of the organisation. Um, many of the people who work for ACE were formerly volunteers with, the pro with that particular organisation who then move on into um, employment through them. Um, and we kind of have a, 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 a such a, a long-term relationship with them that since 2011 that we've kind of become embedded in that organisation. So Ollie works at, in, in ACE half, half the week and I have previously as well. Um, and through that, we've developed this kind of relationship. We're almost we're kind of working for Kai Heritage collectively as Cardiff University and ACE um, together. And it's a friendship. It, there's no other way to describe it. And, uh, uh, and it really has kind of led to those organisations coming together to really fundamentally co-produce the project. And this process of co-production, and many of you will have heard the term before, and it is something that's banded about quite, uh, uh, quite often, sometimes uh, uh, with more authenticity than others. It's, but it's a process that we have learned from ACE. We didn't come in with this idea. Uh, this is our underpinning theory. ACE used this process of co-production to address the very, very serious and significant challenges that they face around poverty, um, um, food um, shortage and deprivation of a whole range. And it's an asset-based approach. So basically, it's about looking not at the negatives that these communities have, but all the very many positives that they have and thinking about what, how we can use those things to kind of help um, uh, the whole range of different people with different problems. Very much about valuing equal contributions. We've heard before about, uh, and I think in the last paper, about how people bring great stuff. They bring knowledge, they bring skills, um, they bring all sorts of talent to the, to the equation. You don't have to be uh, an academic to, to do history or archaeology. Anyone can get involved. We've heard plenty of that. So it's very much about valuing those cont contributions equally and also about really keeping that sustainability going the long-term nature of our project and the way it's evolved has been very important and, and that has come from a series of funding grants which we have been able to access as the university but also through ACE as well. So it's very much all of these things are make up co-production if you like and, and, and this is something that we've then applied to if you like the archaeological and historical research uh, in order to um, uh, really kind of take the project places. This is a nice little diagram that talks a little bit about um, the, uh, the, the process of co-production, really. So we are share, we're the School of History, Archaeology and Religion, and we bring a whole bunch of organisations uh, to the table um, from the heritage sector. Um, ACE bring loads of amazing community groups. We work very closely with a local school uh, and they bring other partner schools. Residents bring other community organisations and friends. And then other university schools get interested and they, get, they want to get involved as well. Then other universities become involved, Sheffield, Aberdeen and Lincoln. And then it kind of, you know, people start linking up and these things kind of all connect up and it gets messy and it gets fun and it gets interesting. Um, and, 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 and this is, if you like, 
the way in which co-production works, and it takes you off in very unusual and organic direction. So uh, we kind of don't regard, we think very, very critically and, and reflectively about the nature of our co-production, if you like. Um, we don't consider that we are full co-production with participants is something that's very difficult to achieve. We're perhaps middle way. We work with community organisations and schools and co-produce with them with input and voices from participants, if you like, and volunteers. Um, but, you know, maybe it's a middle way kind of uh, uh, project in that respect. Right, we haven't got long left. Do you want to? Do you want to finish it off anyway? Right, I'll finish it off with the next 10 slides, thanks. Uh, okay, so very, very quickly, this is what it looks like on the ground. So, excavations, yes, we all know that they're amazing, they're engaging. We ran open access excavations with literally hundreds of volunteers, as far as we could make them open access within, obviously, the realms of health and safety. But as we all know, lots of people can get involved in lots of different things when excavating. And some of the discoveries have been astounding at the at Iron Age Hillfort, nobody knew that there was a Neolithic causeway enclosure beneath that. That was a discovery made initially by a six-year-old child in front of our students uh, and picked out a film uh, from the section uh, there. But obviously, that has been something that's been hugely engaging. And we have, if you like, been able to make that accessible to a range of people, including people uh, with, uh, with uh, disabilities and learning disabilities, um, uh, as well, very much involving schools, um, and not just schools, but this is Cole. He, he lives in Church Road. He'd come up after, after, the, after school had finished and come and get involved and just start kind of sitting the spoil heaps. And so this was something that kind of really kind of garnered a huge interest, but also brought people from other parts of Cardiff to work alongside these local communities, breaking down a lot of those barriers and stigmas. We heard about, um, from Matt about lifelong learning. We, this is something we very much, this is a sort of passion of mine, but we very much embedded free, uh, through the university, we've been able to bring free accredited courses into the fieldwork. So people actually doing the fieldwork then get accredited uh, learning and, uh, and then we then link that up to an open access progression pathway onto degrees. And two people have actually gone on that route. Um, that's not something that's easy to do, but that's somewhere where we'd like to, to, to go further in the future. Ollie was saying before as well, art has been fundamentally important and we work with a project artist from Sheffield called Paul, uh, Paul Evans, who really has brought another whole dimension to them. We've had animated films made on site uh, with the voices of local people talking through clay heads that are met, made on site during excavations. These are young people um, ex uh, who've recently excavated bits of pottery and then they're animating that. Um, but a whole range of other art projects as well. I'm going to quickly skim through. Okay, so yes, lots of outcomes, research papers, lots of participants. There's a lot more than that actually now. Um, uh, and lots of visitors. Um, but fundamentally, the project is, is about, we hope, and I'm, I'm you know, this, this, is, this is a term that is we've banded about a lot and I think it's problematic, but we, we are very much focused on thinking about what can we do to improve the health and well-being of these communities, whether you call that regeneration or whatever. This is what we're, if you like, the way that we've been building towards and we now have an opportunity to do that through uh, a large heritage lottery grant that has just gone in the other week. Um, to take, and that was a, a grant that was very much, that was co-produced with local people. We had co-production working groups around taking this hill fort, which is the largest and oldest monument in Cardiff, and yet there is one sign. If you were in this, if that was in the centre of Cardiff, it would be a major visitor attraction. It's literally half, a, about a mile away from St Fagan, 600,000 visitors per annum. If we can get a fraction of those people coming down to these communities and experiencing this amazing place with local people, if you like, telling them about that, then we can really do something, I think, quite exciting. So this is our plan for a heritage centre, um, uh, the Hidden Hillfort Heritage Centre, which is a community place. It will be an active place of participation. Um, it, we have also a room in the new, uh, new build school. Uh, we're embedding the project into the curriculum over the next three years with commitment from the local education authority. Um, and we are indeed embedded within Action in Cairo Ely as one of their fundamentally key projects um, with in terms of both the funding of the organisation, but also in terms of capacity and personnel, we basically just cross over. Um, so there you go, 6,000 years of heritage in uh, six square miles, tells the story of Wales. Um, that's kind of heritage, sorry. 